Great, so today it's going to be so different. We're not gonna be focusing on food to eat, we're gonna be focusing on food and using it to make DIY natural, organic, and really nourishing for your hair, skin and body, nails, everything you can imagine. Um, the way I do this is I basically try and do like a scrub a week, um, a face mask a week, and really focus on cleansing. I think it's really important um, to keep on top of your skincare rout routine and regime because even though we lead really busy lives, I think that living in a city especially, it can start to show quite quickly and also you want to reduce any signs of um, premature aging and also just feel good about yourself. Like there's, I think that we sometimes forget to look after ourselves. Um, especially mothers, they're always so busy looking after other people. But I would really suggest that you take five minutes out, 10 minutes out every day or two to three times a week to pamper yourself. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with some brown rice. And I found this amazing way of exfoliating. So basically I've always been into exfoliating, but I've never liked the ones that I buy in shops because they're always really, either they just do nothing. And it's like, why did I even bother using that? It doesn't even feel smooth and like it's been, the dead skin cells have been taken off. Or it basically is so harsh that when I read into the ingredients, I'm like, why did I put that on my skin? Because what we put on our skin, um, our blood actually, can actually go into our bloodstream, 70 to 80% of it. So if you're using toxins, even if you're using bleach around the house, imagine what you're exposing your skin to and your body. And that's really not a great way to be going about our daily lives. So what I'm gonna do is show you how to make a super quick, really simple brown rice scrub. So you can use this for your face and body. The reason I tend to use brown rice is because, um, and I try and use organic where possible, is because um, white rice is basically, a lot of it has all the goodness stripped from it. And if you're gonna be using this scrub, you wanna get a lot of that into your body, into your skin. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take the brown rice, we're gonna blitz it to a fine powder. If you don't have um, a spice grinder or anything you can blitz with, that's absolutely fine. What we're gonna do is, the alternative that I can offer you is to put it in a bag, bash it up with a saucepan or a rolling pin until it becomes really fine like powder, but a little bit granular. Or the other alternative is that you put it in a pestle and mortar. So let's start. I'm gonna basically, what I do is, if I talk to you about my routine, I put this, um, once it's blitzed, in an airtight jar. That jar stays in my bathroom, and basically every time I need to scrub, it's there, I mix it with water, I can go to the kitchen, get honey, get lemon, do whatever you want. The reason why making your own beauty products or pampering yourself at home is fantastic is not that I'm suggesting that you shouldn't go and get everything done at beauty parlor or go out with your friends, but because you can tweak it to your skin. Secondly, you see everything that's going into it and you choose everything that's going into it. So if one day you've got acne, you can add a little bit of essential oil maybe to heal it. Next day, if you wanna kind of be more gentle on the skin, instead of using brown rice, I could suggest that you could use oats and blitz them. The same thing, basically, you're, you're using a product, you're blitzing it, and in its most fine form, that's gonna help exfoliate and buff any of the dead skin cells off your, I don't know why I just sound a South African, but anyway, buff any of the dead skin cells off your skin. So I've got here one mug of brown rice, and I'm gonna add that, oh, it's going everywhere. Add that into the, blender and I've got like a blade here that basically is for um, making fine powders I even use it to make a coffee scrub I've got the most amazing coffee scrub recipe up on the blog so I use that kind of blade to do the same but once again you can just use a good old school pestle and mortar so I'm going to put that attachment on So I've blitzed that for about 30 to 40 seconds. See how quick and easy it is. So simple as well. 
just make sure nothing's stuck in the blade. And what you end up with is this kind of, it basically looks like sand. It's got that really like, actually the perfect way to describe it is like golden caster sugar. It's got that kind of um, texture to it that would be great at gentle exfoliating, but it's still, it's still uh, very thorough, which I don't find in a lot of products that I buy on the shelf, off the shelf, should I say. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to mix this with a bit of honey and a little bit of lemon. So one way to do this is to actually get a lemon, which is going to give you a brightening treatment. Trust me, it works, I've tried it. Um, and you can put this a little bit on a plate. And then one way is to get the lemon, so half it, and rub it inside that. Now I suggest that you do this in your bathroom because otherwise you're gonna create a complete mess. And you end up with all the product, all the rice covering the lemon. So you can just tap off the excess, and I'm not gonna show you right now, but I can show you on my hand. Um, and you can just kind of scrub and buff the skin and you'll start to see that it's like got a wet consistency. Can you see that? You got the wetness from the lemon and imagine that on, you can even use it on your body. If you've got any dark patches, like your elbows are a little bit dark, um, your knees, and you just want to kind of brighten it up. And obviously that all over, it actually, it smells amazing. And how good is it just knowing that you threw it together? You didn't have to go and buy something. And even if I use my hand now, it feels really exfoliating. The other alternative is if you find that the lemon's a little bit too astringent for you, you don't want the brightening effect. And in fact, what you want is something that's soothing but exfoliating at the same time. This is great for like sense, for kind of sensitive skin. So what we're gonna do is take some of this rice powder and look at how much I've made with just a cup of rice. That's gonna last you ages. Um, if you scrub, even if you scrub like two to three times a week, that would last you two to three months. So we're just gonna pour in some of the ground rice. And then to that, we're gonna add some honey. Just a drizzle will do. You can add both. What I tend to do is add both, and then I just use my fingers to kind of mix it up. Um, I'm gonna add a little bit of lemon juice, just because I love how zesty it makes it feel. You don't have to add that, that's completely optional. And then what I'm gonna do is mix that up. So you can see that I'm just incorporating all three of those together. And basically what I do is I make it into a paste and if you don't want to add the lemon and you still feel like it's a little bit dry you can just add some water or if you want to be really amazing some green tea that's cooled down then um, what I tend to do is use this in the shower or um, keep it in a bottle and that way it's always on hand, but you don't have to pre-make it. The good thing about keeping it like this is that you can add whatever you want to it. And sometimes I add essential oils. So for example, if you want a really plumping effect to your skin and you want your skin to generally look like it's in really good health um, and a bit glowy and dewy, then what I do is I add one drop of basil oil, um, but try and make sure that it's therapeutic grade because not all essential oils are okay to use on the face, um, and the body directly on the skin. So I'll add some of that to this with some water and I'll scrub and genuinely my face just looks so much better. I look a little bit younger, which is crazy to say, but I do. Um, and I think that it's about tailoring your skincare to you. So when you start learning more about this kind of stuff, you'll, you'll start saying, okay, so I've got combination skin, I can use this, or I should stay away from that. But obviously what you're eating has a huge impact on the general health of your skin. So your skin cells kind of regenerate themselves every 30 days. That means that what you invest in your body and your skincare in this month will start to show in the next few weeks. So don't you know, get impatient or feel like, oh, but it, nothing's changed, nothing's showing. 
the same way if you if you eat something um, and you don't see the results of it on your skin the next day it's the same way if you start doing skincare and taking care of it this month you're going to look fabulous next month <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to be making a really simple but really cool face mask and it's not going to be involving the normal things that you see like kaolin clay and um, egg whites and, and whereas those are fantastic for different things. The reason I love this is because it's just so different, it's so random um, and it's quite fun because you're going to need a pair of scissors and you would have seen on the other episode that I actually did a rice paper roll um, with prawns. This is the same rice paper and you can pick these up from Oriental food shops and they're amazing because basically they have all the goodness of rice but we're gonna be able to mold them and cut them to fit our face and um, we're gonna use green tea so you can soak what we're gonna do basically I'll just run you through it before I actually show you is we're gonna cut a face shape out of this and then we're going to put those different sections, so chin, nose, cheeks, and forehead, in this to steep. So you can use milk, which is great. You can use green tea, which is fantastic because of the antioxidants. Or you can just use plain water. But I do recommend if you're gonna do this, use milk or green tea. Um, it just makes it more effective for your skin. So we're gonna start off by taking our scissors and basically what you want to do is cut the forehead first. So I'll hold it up so it's easy for you to see. Go to the outer corner of it and cut a straight line upwards, like so. By the way, if you can't be bothered to actually do this whole cutting thing, you can just cut it into four, but I just want to show you a cool way to do it. So then the next thing you're going to do is cut a slightly circular shape on top of that and you can lay it out to make yourself remember so that is going to be the forehead okay so what you're left with is this it basically looks like a bit of a freaky mask that just has space for a mouth but obviously you're not going to do it like that because you wouldn't be able to look through it and then what you're going to do is turn it sideways so from there to there and cut a straight line going all the way down the middle so I'll explain what these are going to be in just a second. So you get left with this, right? What you're going to do is create the cheek area. So this one part, this part is going to be one cheek. This part is going to be the other cheek. So you have these two bits here. Now, obviously everyone's faces are different. So you can leave it like this, just make do with it, or you can tailor it slightly. So I'll show you how to do that in a second. So you just lay the cheek bits out there. What you get left with is this bit. So you can use that on your nose. So I'm gonna put that in the center. And then I have this huge bit here. So obviously I'm wearing a hijab. I'm not gonna be able to show you what it's like all the way underneath. Cause when it becomes wet, it basically needs to secure itself to your face. But I do wanna make it slightly more comfortable for myself. So this is gonna be my chin area here. And I'm just gonna cut a small space. So when I put it underneath my lip, it actually fits. So just cut according to your face. So it basically looks like a slice of melon. This, can you see? Fits a lot better like that. And that's going to go underneath. Or if you really don't want to do that and you've got a really small face, you can use that bit for the head. You can swap them over and use that bit for the chin because you, know, you can't be bothered basically. But I can be bothered. Oh, and I'm going to show you. So um, the next thing you're going to do is pour in some really hot water. I boiled some water and left it to cool down. And pour that into a deep dish. Now what you're going to do is put in the green tea. So I'm going to put three tea bags in. One would be fine, but I've got a little bit of an OCD about that. I just, I like it to look full and like there's loads of stuff going on. 
Now, what you will find is some parts may chip away, but that's absolutely fine. It's going to be like a tiny bit missing. Doesn't really make a difference. Don't stress out, especially if, if that's the only rice paper sheet you have and you've run out. But they do tend to come in big packs, so shouldn't be a concern. So then what we're going to do is just let that kind of steep. And I'm just going to let that green tea push it slightly. And you can see that liquid coming out. The whole colour of the water is going to change into a slightly murky colour. Just think about all that goodness packed into these leaves and all that antioxidant accessing your skin. So I'm going to leave that for two to three minutes. So now I've got it all laid out. Um, I've got the forehead, the nose, the cheeks and the chin. And I'm just going to custom tailor it to my face, basically. So what you do is you hold up the... <laughs> this is really weird that I'm doing this, but anyway. Obviously, usually I don't think about other people seeing me do this, but I'm going to put this on my cheek and it comes down too low for me. So what I'm going to do is just cut off that, that corner there and just curve it slightly. Like that. Yeah, it's a lot more comfortable. And then do the same thing. To make it easy, you could always just double up, hold them like that, and cut round it. So you end up with two cheek pieces. And uh, right now I feel like I'm probably on some kind of really weird uh, outer space drama, but you're going to feel amazing once you've done it. And it's really brightening actually. So um, we've let the tea bag steep in there for a few minutes. What we're going to do is we're going to place these in the water. So just to show you, I'm going to do the two cheek pieces and the nose piece. Now with rice paper, it becomes flaccid and flexible really quickly. The good thing about this is you don't need to worry because right now it obviously is quite brittle and it looks like it's going to break. Once you put it in the water, it becomes soft and stretchy and I'm going to show you on my hand um, and leave it on there for 15 to 20 minutes. Now obviously the best thing would be to get a few girls round or do it at home on a day where you just want to chill um, and leave it on until it becomes dry. When it's dry you can peel it off and the fantastic thing is it's biodegradable. So you can see it's starting to go a bit flaccid. Just make sure it's all fully immersed in the water. And what it should look like is something like this. So it will basically look a little bit slimy. So that's going to be the cheek piece. So obviously if I was going to put it on my face, I'd put it on right now. And I know that you want me to put it on my face, but I'm sorry, not today. I'm not going to be able to put it on my face, but I'm just going to use, put that back in and use the nose piece to demonstrate on my hand. So you can see it's quite stretchy. It's durable, so you don't need to freak out about it just being a little bit weird. Place that over the hand and you can pat that down. And it actually feels really relaxing. I don't know what it is about this. It feels really soothing and soft. I'm just going to leave that on now. And uh, obviously I'm not going to do anything with this hand because it would just be weird and walking around with like rice mask on my hand. Let it dry. Fab. So it's been 20 minutes. And I'm just going to show you, obviously, if it was on your face, you just peel it off in sections. But because I did it on my hand to show you, it's, it doesn't hurt. You don't have to worry about it. It's literally the most amazing feeling. Just peel it off really slowly. And it's, you can just literally do that, chuck it away. My, my skin feels really cleansed and soft. And when I do it on my face, it feels a lot, it feels just a lot more gentle and delicate. Um, as opposed to kind of using harsh chemicals on your face and um, not really knowing what they're doing with those products. So you can do it at home with your friends. I hope you enjoy it. We're going to make a really cool um, cacao body scrub. So you've got the antioxidants from the raw cacao powder. And this is the only time you're probably going to see me using sugar on this show. We've got some brown sugar. I have to admit it does smell amazing, but you're going to be using it for its scrubbing properties. 
Um, and then we're going to add a pinch of cinnamon, which is great for bringing um, the blood to the surface of the skin. And also what I've got here is some melted cacao butter. So the cacao butter and the raw cacao powder are two things that go into raw chocolate. And you can imagine that if you're going to put these ingredients in the scrub, it's going to smell phenomenal. So the last thing you're going to do is add some almond oil and combine all of those together. So it's super quick, really simple. Store it in a jar, keep it in the fridge or in the bathroom and you'll thank yourself for it because it just smells phenomenal. So we've got the melted cacao butter. We're going to add the almond oil. So that's moisturizing. I'm going to add a pinch of cinnamon. Also cinnamon just smells divine. It's so warming. I don't know how people can not like the smell of cinnamon. And then you're going to add, you can, this, the thing is you can freestyle with this, but what you want to do is get like a thick consistency that you can run your spoon through. And then you're going to add your sugar. Get a spoon and you'll start to see that it all dissolves, blends really nicely together and it'll actually look like chocolate. It's so deceiving. So stir that together. It smells divine. And if you're finding that it's a little bit too liquidy, add a little bit more of each of the sugar. And of the raw cacao powder. So it smells divine. It actually smells, I don't know why I haven't put coffee in here, but it's got that kind of muscovado smell from the brown sugar. And you just want to mix in all of that until you get a, a little bit of a dry consistency. It'll end up looking like chocolate cake, basically. But the amazing thing is that um, having this ready to use means that you won't need to spend loads on scrubs from shops. You're using things that are stimulating for the skin and um, you'll end up with something that looks like this, where it's stiff and quite grainy. Honestly, it just smells like chocolate. I just really want to eat it right now, but I, I can't. I can't eat that. But it smells amazing. I love the way it sounds like I'm telling myself. I can't eat it. And then, once you've ended up with this consistency, that's perfect. You want to get a jar and put it straight into there. I think the mouth of the jar is too small. Obviously, you can tweak this. If you want to, you can add some essential oils. If you don't have almond oil, if you don't have um, almond oil, try using olive oil. Um, if you don't have that, you can use avocado oil. Just use something that's moisturizing. And it's just perfect for when you want to exfoliate. And you're trying not to eat dessert. <laughs> So wheatgrass is this really strange concoction. It's bright green and it's actually derived from dehydrating wheatgrass, the plant. You can get it in fresh juice form, but a lot of people don't have the machines to actually make or strong enough blenders to make wheatgrass juice at home. You can buy it from farmers markets and some health food shops, but what I like to take is the wheatgrass powder. So the powder is basically bright green and is really detoxifying for the liver and the colon. 
As well as that, it's great for acneaceous skin. So a quick tip is that you can mix some wheatgrass powder on a cotton face pad with some milk and just apply it to the areas where the acne is and it will really soothe it and treat it. It's also fantastic for insect burns, minor burns and sunburn. So the great thing about this is that when you have this lying around, you'll find that you drink it by mixing it with water or adding a little bit to a green smoothie and it makes it so much more appetizing. Obviously it's difficult if you're gonna be taking something plain with water, you'll probably not like the taste, but it's quite mild compared to things like spirulina. So wheatgrass is packed with amino acids and beta carotene. Generally it's hailed for its anti-aging properties. So it's meant to be amazing for skin, but also for, for slowing down black hair turning gray or reversing some damaged cells because it's got antioxidants in it and prohibiting those free radicals. So give it a try. Oh,